Since 1998, Shehalyan has been producing oil and gas in the harsh west of Shetland environment. After 14 years of producing from the Loyal and Shehalyan fields, BP and their partners have made the decision to replace the existing vessel with a new FPSO. But in order for that to take place, there are a number of processes that require to be undertaken. As part of the shutdown procedures, the Surface Controlled Subsurface Safety Valve, or SCSSV, will have to be closed and then integrity tested using wellbore pressure. The SCSSV valve is closed by sending an electrical signal from the control room on board the vessel that travels down the dynamic umbilical risers and along the static umbilicals on the seabed to the subsea control modules on each of the Christmas trees on each of the five subsea drill centers, in this case central. The subsea control system will then vent the hydraulic pressure in the subsea well's hydraulic lines. The venting of pressure in the hydraulic lines will allow the operation of the SCSSV 200 meters below the surface of the seabed. Once the SCSSV valve is shut, an important barrier is now in place to prevent any unplanned flow of hydrocarbons and standard well integrity testing can begin. On the subsea tree, the choke valve will also be operated and shut to trap pressure in the well for integrity testing. The rest of the process to clean the facility, risers, flow lines and subsea system will begin in a staggered schedule as each of the wells are closed. The order will be Loyal, Northwest, Central and West. With the wells shut in, the system is bulk de-oiled and flushed of hydrocarbons using injection quality seawater. There are four planned flushes of each production line. The first flush will complete bulk de-oiling of the lines and will be done, in this example from Central, from the FPSO down one production riser, across a manifold and through a pigging isolation valve and back up through the other production line. After two further flushes with injection water, a final fill will be executed containing a chemical cocktail to eliminate the risk of corrosion during the FPSO off-station period throughout the Quad 204 project and beyond. After all the production and test line flushing is completed over all the drill centers, over 5,800 tons of fluid of flushed seawater and hydrocarbons will have been pumped from and returned to the FPSO. These fluids will then be offloaded to the Loch Rannock tanker for disposal. After the production system has been flushed, there is still gas to be removed from the risers. Riser disconnections will be made from either flow line termination assemblies or riser end terminations and the risers moved to one side to allow a pig catcher system to be installed on the end of the disconnected riser. Within the turret of the FPSO, the 15 inch long foam pigs are installed in the riser hang off end connection and pushed down through the riser and round the hog bend by using the firewater systems on board Shehalyan. The pig will force out any remaining gas bubbles inside the riser along its journey. Travelling at around 1 metre per second, it takes the pig up to 20 minutes to travel through the 700 metre long riser, while cameras on the ROV confirm the pig has completed its journey and been received at the pig catcher. With all 15 of the production risers disconnected and pigged, and three dynamic umbilical risers disconnected and purged, it is now possible to begin the process of disconnecting the risers and umbilicals from within the FPSO turret and cross-hauling and laying the risers back on the seabed. As well as the removal of hydrocarbons, various modifications top sides are required to be completed to prepare for tow. A temporary generator will be installed nearby the power generation module to supply the main power generation following switch-off of the gas turbines. An existing Smit bracket at the aft of the vessel, aligned to the existing double drum winch, will allow a tug to be stationed at the stern of the vessel for heading control. At the bow of the vessel, two existing Smit brackets will be used to attach two tugs for station keeping, stabilizing the vessel when its mooring chains are being disconnected. Two new Smit brackets will also be installed in line with the centerline fair leads. These brackets will be used for the final towing arrangement. There are 
15 flexible risers and three dynamic umbilical risers that connect between the FPSO and the seabed. To remove them, the lift vessel's crane picks up the tip of each flexible riser and delicately navigates around its seabed mooring, avoiding the remaining nearby risers and mooring chains. Floats at the base of the riser aid the process as the riser is gradually looped back over and lowered to rest on the seabed. The 18 risers and umbilicals will be disconnected top sides one by one until the FPSO is ready for the final disconnection from its mooring chains. In order to fully disconnect Shahalian from its location, all 14 mooring chains will need to be removed. With one tug aft for heading control, a lift vessel will crane each 350-ton mooring chain back onto itself individually. With the chains measuring 1.8 kilometers long, the lift vessel will travel 2 kilometers to lay each one safely down on the seabed. In this first phase, six of the chains are dismantled. With a further two tugs attached to the existing bow smit brackets, the supporting tugs are positioned at their station-keeping arrangement. Their role is to prevent the FPSO from weather veining so that the eight remaining mooring chains can be removed. Once the FPSO is finally detached from the seabed, a third arrangement of tugs will allow the towing process to start. In 2013, after contributing significantly to the energy requirements of the UK, Shehalian will be able to make its second ever journey, docking at port to be fully cleaned and engineered down.